Hello guys, today I'll give you guys a quick demonstration of my uh, ENGR 359 project uh, for UBC Okanagan. Um, this course requires me to implement uh, pretty much an open-ended uh, design using an EOS 2 processor and this Altera DE1 board um, to do some kind of task or play a game or something. Uh, for the purposes of this project, I decided to implement a game of Simon Says. Uh, basically, in this game, you can... Uh, it, it's pretty standard. Uh, it's a matter of just memorizing a sequence of lights and being able to reiterate it back to the board, as you probably are well aware of. Um, but, in the end, I decided I would post this video on YouTube as I was looking through initially to get some project ideas, and I noticed that there's not a lot of simple... Um, DE1 projects out there, as uh, a lot of them are like VGA Tetris and stuff like that, which is uh, extremely difficult and would sit, be out of the scope of a uh, project for say the course I'm in right now. So if any of you guys are in the same boat, uh, hopefully this will help you out. Um, so first of all, I will give you guys a quick look at my SOPC builder. Um, I used obviously the Cortis 2 software, which has the SOPC builder, and the Altera Monitor program, which are both used to get this guy going. So, coming over to my laptop, um, you can see that I use a NEOS 2 processor. It's the Type S for standard, um, soft processor, obviously. Um, I use 16K of on chip memory for my stack. I have uh, parallel input output ports for green LEDs, red LEDs, switches, keys, and the seven segment displays. Uh, furthermore, I also have down at the bottom here the timer zero um, uh, hardware module. Um, this was the only thing I was not familiar with when I started this project, so it gave me a little bit of hassle. Um, so if any of you guys are in the same boat, I'll give you guys just a quick run through on how this guy works. Basically in the top you see there under timeout period that shows you uh, how long the timer takes to count down. Um, I set the counter size to 32 bits which is all I need. Um, furthermore under this section I made sure that I unchecked that box and that box because the first box controls uh, the ability to be able to actually control the period dynamically within your program which I do and furthermore it um, that second box I un or the third box for that matter I unchecked because I needed the ability to uh, be able to control and start the timer at my discretion. So that's pretty much all there is to that. Um, obviously, you'll get your memory addresses and everything when you finish generating your system. Um, basically, I implemented the hardware using a Verilog file as I was allowed to within the project. Um, I'll give you guys a quick look here. Uh, not a lot to it. Pretty simple Verilog coding. Uh, one thing I will uh, tell you guys is that if you're using the Altera Monitor program and you've written a .s script file, um, make sure you have that reset underscore n, which is an asynchronous reset. Um, in this case, I made it my switch 9. Um, but if you don't have that, uh, the Altera Monitor program will not compile. And that was giving me a really weird error out of the multi or Terra Monitor program, which I was banging my head um, for a really long amount of time trying to figure it out. But eventually, a uh, uh, forum on Google gave me the solution, which was just to put in a simple asynchronous reset, and away I went. Um, with that being said, um, everything else I've done or coded uh, with purely assembly language. And I will now give you guys a quick demonstration of how this board works and my program being operated on it. So initially I'll turn this guy on. As you can see, the default program is now running. Coming back to my laptop screen, I need to hit that button right there, which will pop up this box. Just ignore it, doesn't matter. Uh, and you'll notice that this program's popped up a nice hidden window down here. So we come back, and now we hit the start button right there. You'll notice now that the board is not doing its default actions anymore, and it is ready to accept my .s script file from the Altera monitor program. 
So I've already pre-generated um, the project file for the Altair Monitor program. All I have to do is compile and load it. You'll notice in the bottom corner that there is a bunch of messages popping up. If you ever have any errors, they will pop up down there. Sometimes this uh, program is actually pretty helpful and it will tell you exactly what line you have an error in and give you an idea of what the error probably is. But for other errors, it's useless. Uh, for example, like I said, with my asynchronous reset, it was giving me the most bizarre error with some JTAG URT uh, garbage, which um, I, it took me forever to figure out what exactly was causing it. Um, but regardless, just be mindful of that. Um, but once your program successfully compiles, you'll see uh, your screen will pop up with an uh, instruction version of your code. Um, all you got to do is on the top menu here is press this button and with that my program is actually now running on my board so right now my the board doesn't look like it's doing a whole lot which kind of isn't um, but basically I'll give you guys a rundown on controls before I actually dive into this game uh, this switch right here controls or starts the game um, this switch here controls the difficulty setting which basically uh, reduces the amount of time the user has to re-enter the sequence back to the board. This light here makes the green LEDs flash the sequence quicker, actually at twice the speed to be more exact. Um, and lastly, this switch here doubles the length of the game. Right now I have a standard game set up to have 10 levels. If you pass all 10 levels, you win. Uh, each level will correspond to one of these LED lights. Um, the outputs, as I mentioned, will be on the green LEDs, and my inputs will be with these keys. So, I will give you guys a quick demonstration of the easy mode. Uh, probably will do really bad here, because I'm holding the camera while trying to memorize stuff, and multitasking is not my forte, but it will try it anyway. So, if I flick this switch up, first thing you'll notice is it's going to flash a green LED, and then the seven segment display, this far one to be exact, will start counting down from... Uh, from six for six seconds. Uh, if the counter obviously goes to zero, I will lose. But here we go. So you can see that the far light turned on, and my seven segment display is counting down. So when I press that key, I go on to the next level, which signified two. A countdown's count again. So I hit that key, and if I hit that guy, so I've just passed another level. As you can see, flashing away. I'll let the counter wind down this time to show you what will happen if I take too long, boom, I've just lost. So on this, uh, or, uh, the seven segment displays, you can see that the message of lose is on the screen. Um, furthermore, the level stays displayed so that you can see how far you actually made it. Um, to restart the game, all I have to do is simply click the switch back down, and that in my program clears all the registers, sets the stack back to where it initially was when the program started, and I, and it's ready to start over again. So this time I will show you the uh, extra setting with a little more difficulty. This time uh, notice that on the 7 segment displays it will be 2 seconds less uh, for me to enter in my next values. So here we go. So as you can see this time it started a little less. But gameplay is exactly the same other than a shorter countdown. So I'll just hit a wrong key and you can see that by hitting the wrong key I lose the game once again. So now I can reset the game by flicking that switch down, I'll click this one down and put this one up so now you'll notice that these LEDs will flash at twice the speed they did before. So here we go so it makes it just a little bit more difficult and once again I'll let the timer count down and there we go so click that off, click those two down another cool feature is that by setting, or the way at least I implemented this program by flicking both of these switches I can actually now have this timer count down from a smaller value plus have these flick faster even making it more difficult so if I do that you can see the counter is not as high and it's flashing values quicker I'll hit a wrong key, and I lose. Um, I'm not going to show you the extended game mode because it's literally the same thing, uh, with the exception that now it goes from 
uh, or goes for 20 levels instead of 10. Um, and when I hit level 10, I use a shift left so that basically this light will turn, or this LED will go blank, then this one, then this one, then this one. So I will win in that mode when all these LEDs go from blank to full and then back to blank, uh, symbolizing level 20. With that, I think that pretty much covers the functionality of my game. Um, when I, if I win, um, these or the seven segment displays will display the message end E N D on it, signifying that you win. Obviously, it's a little different than the lose uh, message, but being uh, this type of seven segment display, you can't get very intricate, obviously, with your uh, messages. Um, so basically. Uh, I implemented this code using six subroutines and about 500 lines of assembly code. Um, obviously, that's an awful lot. This program could probably be implemented with, uh, using far less, but I tried to keep it pretty bare bones. Um, and it's actually a relatively simple program to create and follow. It's just lengthy. And furthermore, uh, I decided to not use interrupts because, for one, um, I didn't need the performance boost using interrupts provides, and two, it uh, would have really made it difficult to do stuff, difficult like randomize these LEDs as I use polling as my primary method. Um, so with that, I'll just give you guys a quick look at just how much assembly code I have. Um, you can see here, I mean, it's pretty lengthy. So, I'm obviously not going to go through the specifics of that, or otherwise it would make this video into a marathon of a viewing spree, but uh, with that, I think I'll just uh, tell you a couple things to watch out for. Um, if you're making a game like this, you might want to take a look at uh, ensuring that you don't have glitches. For example, when I programmed this game, uh, one glitch that I had I initially didn't count for was that um, after counting down when I press this key for putting an input in or any of these keys for that matter and held my finger on him uh, the countdown timer would stop which would essentially give me an infinite amount of time to think about the next key uh, before I release it which then again it would, the next timer uh, phase would begin so I had to make sure that I kept the timer counting down while I kept my finger pressed on this key another thing um, like I said, to watch out for it was just the interval timer. Um, there's a little bit of stuff on the internet uh, and on the Altera website. It's a little bit confusing to use. You gotta kind of watch the uh, control registers and stuff, especially if you're looking to be able to set your own periods and set your own start and stop bits. Uh, also, if you looking to simplify this project down to uh, pretty much nothing. Um, if you take away the six or the the timer, I would have found at least that it would have almost reduced my code by half. Initially, when I set this project up, I didn't have the timer in there, so the user had an infinite amount of time to enter the sequence back using the keys, um, and that took me about I'd say about 150 to about 200 lines of code. But as soon as I put in the uh, the countdown timer, it almost doubled the length of my code and made it much much more difficult. Um, with that though, uh, that's pretty much all that there is to it. Uh, hopefully this will help you guys out. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them on the wall or uh, send me a message um, so that I can give you guys a hand perhaps. Um, if there's a lot of interest in my code, I may do a video um, or screen video on uh, my assembly code, although like I said it is uh, pretty lengthy and it's probably not uh, that elegant by any means, but regardless I'd be willing to go through it with you guys if you so desire. Uh, with that, uh, thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video.